Hi, I'm Andrew Holden, interventional radiologist uh, from Auckland, New Zealand, and I have the pleasure to be with uh, Dr. Stefan Muller-Hulsberg from Flansburg in Germany. And Stefan has just uh, most importantly presented the one-year data of the uh, randomized prospective uh, trial comparing uh, two drug-eluting stents, the Boston Scientific Illuvia drug-eluting stent against the Cook Zilver PTX drug-eluting stent in femoropopliteal disease in the Imperial trial. Stefan, perhaps you can tell us what were the most impressive uh, findings from this particular trial? It's rather easy to say. So Illuvia showed an improved primary patency at 12 months compared to the Silver PTX. Mm. And what do you think the implications are for physicians who may be considering using drug eluting stents? I think with, that, with these data, physicians have now two devices available they can use safely if there is a need for an implant. If they want to use the drug eluting stents, they have two technologies available. We know from silver PTX data, from the five year data, this stent is also safe, has a very high patency rate. And you also can use a polymer stent, mm. the Illuvia stent, and it is also safe. It has also a little bit an enhanced primary patency. Mm. This primary patency enhancement, both of them use paclitaxel, both of them yeah. a self-expanding night and old stent. Yeah. Do you put that down to the polymer particularly? I would say yes, because in my understanding, I'm not an engineer who constructs stents and polymers, but if you have a polymer on board, if you combine the polymer with paclitaxel, then we have the opportunity to determine the amount of drug release and the timeline of drug release. And with the Illuvia stand, the timeline was uh, determined in that manner that you have immediately after the stand implantation some kind of intermediate burst drug release mm -hmm. compared to the silver PTX, you have a high burst immediate drug release. But due to the polymer, you have a drug release over time so-called sustained drug release and this for around about one year or even longer. And given that a lot of that restenosis we're seeing is often in that nine to twelve month period, you think that may be the difference in terms of that? I think this makes a difference because we know the most of the restenosis occur within 12 months, between six and twelve months. And I think this is an issue we have to take into account and therefore sustained drug release might be the key of success. And given the outstanding results, as you rightly say, from both arms of the trial, what do you think your approach, when will you be using drug eluting stents during revascularization in the femoropopathial artery? That's a very good question. And we know from DCB data, a DCB works very, very well, either in occluded segments, in multi-level stenosed segments. And our approach is always to perform a PTA first and then we will look and see how the lesion behaves we have treated. And if we feel there is a lot of elastic recoil, for example, if we have to deal with flow limiting dissection and an additional or a second long-term PTA, either with a PTA balloon or with a DCB balloon, is not sufficient enough, then I would say this is the ideal patient group which is prone for an implant, which serves as a scaffold. And from current perspective, I would prefer to use a drug eluting scaffold like Silver PTX or the Illuvia stand. Now that concept of clinically driven target lesion revascularization, I mean re-intervention, it's obviously important for patients but also for funders. So can you tell us a little bit about what this trial showed comparing the two stents with regard to target lesion revascularization. Yeah. As you mentioned, it's first of utmost importance for the patient. For example, if you look a little bit closer to the imperial data, then we could show after 12 months, the patients were happy. They had a clinical improvement. They had a hemodynamic improvement. But for example, we needed twice the high revascularization rate in the silver PTX group compared to the um, Illuvia group in order to achieve these good clinical mm -hmm. results. That means for the patient, he has to come back for a re-intervention in order to have a good result after 12 months. And for the funders, I think it's also of utmost importance because insurance companies have to pay for an additional intervention and this is something we hopefully can avoid in the future mm -hmm. with this new technology. Well, I think Boston Scientific should be congratulated for supporting a first head-to-head -head trial and also yeah. congratulations to you, Stefan, for being the first person to present this data. 
What would be your key message to physicians who are now analyzing this data as they look at the, the Imperial trial? So first of all, it's, it's a clinical trial and you have to look very carefully at trial data because all these data were obtained under defined conditions, meaning a patient has to include, uh, has to fulfill inclusion criteria, defined exclusion criteria. However, once a patient was enrolled into the trial, I think the message is rather clear. This is the Illuvia stent. We could obtain a higher, we obtained a higher primary patency rate. And I think this is of utmost of importance for the patient. The re-intervention rate with Illuvia is half the re-intervention rate compared to the silver PTX. And this is something what founders, insurance companies, and patients should keep in mind. And also we as physicians, when we have to decide which kind of implant, if there is a need for implanted implant, we should use. Great, well thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much, I highly appreciate it.